of course, the dismissal of that case uh, for the family. Well, joining us uh, to discuss uh, more of that judgment uh, is, of course, uh, Tabangpo with Francis. Thank you very much. She's from Section 27. Of course, the legal advocacy group that was supporting the Kamape family, uh, although the family walking away basically empty-handed after asking for that 3 million rand today. Tabang Pue, thank you for being with us. Uh, just, just give us your overall response to Section 27. Um, as Section 27, we find that the judgment is really a mixed bag because on the one hand, it seeks to vindicate the rights of all learners across the province by creating um, a structural interdict, ordering the department to go into all the schools and ensure that they have sanitation that is um, safe, hygienic and adheres to principles of human justice. But on the other hand, the judgment falls short in recognizing the grief and suffering of the parents and ultimately deciding not to grant constitutional damages in a manner where Michael had died in the most worst of terms mm -hmm. under the care of the department. I, I'm not saying that you did, but surely this court process raised the expectation of the, the family that there would be some sort of payout, which, which makes it even worse. I think um, with us, what we had made it clear is that the common law in South Africa, in, uh, particularly in, ca in cases involving young children of this nature, doesn't allow for huge sums um, in uh, compensation. And thus we are asking the court to firstly try and develop the common law to allow for a, a, a damages to recognize grief. Alternatively, to develop the constitutional damages aspect, which then looks at the severity of the rights that are implicated and the fact that there isn't sufficient remedies. And then because of the egregious violation of rights would then allow for a damages claim under that prism. So at we least knew, to set a precedent. Yes, it was in part to set a precedent and it is an area of law that has not been explored a lot. And, and you have said that, you know, life is city many, the, the payouts were were big but now there's nothing. Is there really an analogy between those two cases? I think in both cases um, there was a claim for general damages. In Life as a Dimeni we had put down a claim of around 200,000 and similarly in the Komape case we had a claim um, that was more than that but also we used actuaries to look at psychological harm and then quantify that. And then in life as a domania, again, because of the nature, the callous nature in which the department conducted themselves, the rights violations and the fact that human dignity and life is entrenched in our constitution, we're able to make an argument around constitutional damages. And similarly, we did the same in Michael Komabe because, you know, we're looking at the rights to dignity, education, the rights of children and then being able to say because of the way in which these rights were violated and admittedly so by the department this court ought to recognize that some claim exists under that prism. Is, is it not different because in Life is a you have a group of managers who were callous, reckless, uh, so there were individuals involved. In, in the, the Pit Latrine story we know there's a constitutional imperative to provide uh, sanitation, but there are so many constitutional imperatives that we accept that government at least is just doing its, its best. Is, is that the difference there? The one is uh, individuals, the other is infrastructure in general. Um, there, there isn't, we can't say that there, we c there is a difference, but um, that's, I think, in very small aspects. If you consider it, you have a constitution that guarantees the right to education that is unqualified and is not supposed to be limited in any way. The second thing is that you had a department that knew about the infrastructure needs of that province. Mm. In fact, Section 27 sat down with the minister's team to talk about sanitation prior to Michael's death, where they undertook to build over 600 toilets in Limpopo schools where they knew that facilities were dangerous. And Mark Haywood, our executive director, provided this evidence in court and the judge notes that the department knew all of that. They had the money but did not spend it on, on sanitation. In fact, the money was taken back um, to the to treasury because it was unspent. Mm -hmm. Three is that they knew that the really? structures were so, so there was were money dangerous. available and it was not spent it and the imperatives were, were very clearly known. And as a result of that, the fact that there was money, they knew the obligation and they knew the extent to which toilets in the province were a problem. They did not do everything possible to ensure the eradication and that's resulting in Michael's death. Mm -hmm. All of this is acknowledged in the judgment, but surprisingly the judgment does not then reach 
um, a finding for constitutional damages. Instead, the judge recognizes all of these violations, but then says, in order to prevent this from happening again, what he will want to order is a structural interdict and make sure it does not happen again. Okay, at least for other children. For other children. I, I think somebody uh, on social media there raised a, a valid point. If he had ordered constitutional damages, say three million rand, that's money that government cannot spend to fix things like toilets for, for other kids. So, so maybe the judge is considering things like that as well. Um, I think we have to understand the nature of compensation and how it works. Where there's a duty and an obligation to do something and somebody fails and the result, the failure of doing something results in something like that, that family needs compensation. Mm. That is where government has blatantly failed to do something. We what about the, the millions waiting for RDP houses when, when there's a constitutional right to provide housing? Can they all sue? Do you know what I mean? It, it, it opens such a floodgates. Is I, that not part of the consideration? I think it's important to remember that accountability is a crucial aspect of our democracy and it's one of the cornerstones. If we are aggrieved by government conduct and unable to vindicate our rights, it will make the constitution meaningless. And so in order to avoid the floodgates argument, for example, government has to plan. When they plan, they need to finance it. And once they finance it, they need to implement and make sure that they're evaluating along the line. Our court says where the government is reasonable in its conduct, you wouldn't find against them. Mm. But in instances like this, when there's a clear failure to plan, when a life is lost unnecessarily, it is very the, it's hard then to say that Michael's parents shouldn't be claiming that three million because that three million should be used for other schools when we know that that money is not used to build schools in any event. Mm. And so they have they are well within their rights to claim these rights. Okay, so what happens now? Um, we are exploring the possibility of an appeal because we think it's very important to ensure that um, their rights are vindicated and that we get the law right because this family is entitled to constitutional damages. And, and will you follow uh, the department's efforts to provide this plan now? Uh, we, we, it seems like we don't even know the number of pit latrines in Limpopo. They have to provide that and then start fixing things properly. Um, I think it's important and we are cautiously optimistic and we, we raise caution because, like we said, we started to engage with them on sanitation in 2012 already, and we still haven't gotten a decent plan that eradicated sanitation. Over uh, a few weeks ago, we found out about another tragic death of another learner in the Eastern Cape, again as a result of failing to plan and, and eradicate pit toilets. The president has issued a directive saying that there's a plan that must be done for nationwide. And now the court has issued another directive saying that, that there should be a plan. So our hope is that we'll follow through and make sure that they comply with this order and that by the 30th of July, we'll be able to measure if there's any impact. All right. Thank you for your explanations tonight. That was uh, Tabang Bhue from Section 27, the Legal Advocacy Group. Bongani.